So this video lesson is all about the idea of simplifying fractions. And it assumes, when we go into it, that you have some comfort with forming fractions, uh, with knowing what fractions are and what they represent. And so all we're going to talk about today is simplifying them. In order to simplify them, um, let's take a look at the context of, say, we have a big basket of fruit. Uh, and in that basket of fruit, we have 27 apples, 16 oranges, 22 grapefruits, 20 pineapples, and 15 pears. So first, go ahead and pause the video and write each of the types of fruit as a fraction of the whole. So the first thing we have to do to figure out the fraction of each type of fruit of the whole is figure out just how much fruit we have. If we had 27 plus 16 plus 22 plus 20 plus 15, we end up with 100. So 100 is the total amount of fruit that we have. That means the apples represent 27 out of the 100. The oranges represent 16 out of the 100. The grapefruits represent 22 out of 100. The pineapples represent 20 out of the 100. And the pears represent 15 out of the 100. So each of these is a fraction of the total basket of fruit that we have that each of the fruits represent. So looking at these fractions, some of them um, are nicer to look at. Uh, we can see exactly what they are uh, out of the total group of 100, which is something very nice. But we have some fractions, like 20 out of 100, that we might be able to make a little bit simpler into a form that's a little bit easier to understand. Is there a way to also represent that 20 out of the 100 of pineapples without having 20 and 100 as the numerator and denominator? So basically, the question that we're asking when we're looking at some of these things is, can we represent them differently? For example, if we had um, a new basket of fruit where there were 16 apples out of a total of 32, 32 different types of fruit, then 16 out of 32 is the same as half of the fruit being apples. So can we find, let's erase this so that we don't have to confuse, we have 27 out of 100. Can we find an easier way, a simpler way, of representing, say, our 20 pineapples? 20 out of 100. And we can do that, and we can find simpler ways of doing that, because every fraction has what's called a simplest form. And the simplest form of a fraction is just the case where the numerator and denominator have a GCF of 1. That is, they share no factors except for 1. They may be very large numbers, they may be very small numbers, but regardless, the numerator and denominator have to have a GCF of 1. And to put the fraction in simplest form, we just have to divide both numerator and denominator by the GCF of 2. So go ahead, pause the video, write down these two definitions, what the simplest form, and the process for finding it, and then come back and do it. So now, let's go back to that example that we had talked about, where we had the different fractions of the fruit in the basket we had, and look specifically at 20 and 100. We want to find an easier way of representing the 20 out of the 100 fruit in our pineapples. Now, if we don't immediately find an obvious GCF, then we can go through and just notice some things that these fractions have in common. And 20 and 100 are both have a 0 at the end, so they're both divisible by 10. If we divide numerator and denominator, both by 10, then we end up with two tenths. And 2 out of 10 ends up representing the same thing as 20 out of 100. And now 2 and 10 share a factor of 2, so we can divide both by 2 and get 1 fifth. So 1 and 5 don't share any factors. One of those numbers is 1, which shares the only factor it has is 1. So 20 out of 100 represents the same value as 1 out of 5. And 1 out of 5 is a much easier fraction to look at and understand, potentially, than 20 out of 100. It doesn't tell us immediately how many pineapples there are, because there are not one pineapple out of five fruit. Um, there are 20 out of 100, so we would have to know that there are 100 fruit and find a way of converting back to know how many pineapples there are. But the fact remains that the simplest version of that fraction is 1 fifth. Now let's take a look at 16 out of 100. Take a look at the oranges, which are 16 out of 100. 
Whereas with the 20 out of 100, we went through and we divided piece by piece. Let's try to find the GPF of 16 and 100. Now, uh, go ahead and pause the video, see what you can find. What is the GPF of 16 and 100? So 16's prime factorization becomes 2 to the 4th. 100's prime factorization is 2 squared to 5 squared. So the only thing that 16 and 100 share are two twos in their prime factorization. It has to be the two because that's the smallest number we have. So the GCF of the two is four. If we divide both of these by four, numerator and denominator, we have four out of 25, which is as simple as we can get. Four and 25 share no common factor. Um, and just as a matter of exercise to show you that we really do end up at the same value. If we were to divide both sides by 2 at first because we thought that uh, 2 may be the GCF or we couldn't find the GCF, we would end up with an 8 out of 50. Both of those are also divisible by 2, so we could just divide by 2 and numerator and denominator again. And yes, end up at 4 out of 25. So go ahead, pause the video, and see what you can do about putting all of these four fractions into the simplest form. So first you have to translate them from uh, words into fractions, find the GCF, and put them in the simplest form. Pause the video and come back when you're ready to go over it. So for number one, 22 hundredths is 22 and 1 hundredth. The GCF of 22 and 1 hundredth is 2. Divide both by 2, and you get 11 out of 50, which is the simplest form. Uh, to see that the GCF really is that, 22 is 2 times 11. 100, as we said, is 2 squared. 5 squared, the only thing they share is that 1, 2. So divide both by 2, and you get 11 out of 50. For number 2, we have 13 65ths. Now, it may not be immediately obvious that these... Uh, two integers share anything, uh, but it turns out that they do. They are both divisible by 13. Gives you 1 out of 5 as the simplest form. Uh, 65 turns out just to be 5 times 1. If we look at number 3, 95 thousandths, we'll put that up here as 95 over 1,000. Let's look at the prime factorization to find the GCF at this point. 95 is 5 times 19. 1,000 is 2 cubed times 5 cubed. The only thing that they share is this 1 5 uh, that we see in the 95. 1,000 has many 5s, but it can only share 1 with the 95. Divide both numerator and denominator by 5 and end up with 19 two hundredths. And finally, for 11 twentieths, 11 over 20. Uh, if we try to find the GCF of the two, we find that 11 is the same as, well, 11, it's prime, and 20 is 2 squared times 5. Now, there are no factors of 20, no prime factors of 20, that are also a prime factor of 11, so it turns out that this is actually the simplest form of 11 twentieths. And now, so all of these things lead us into the next idea of still involving different forms of fractions, because we started with, let's go back to the pineapple example where we had 20 over 100. Uh, if we divided both by 2, we would get 10 out of 50. If we divided both of those by 2 again, we would get 5 out of 25. If we divided both of those by 5 again, we would get 1 out of 5. And so, right here, we see four different fractions and there are more, that all represent the same value because we have multiplied or divided our numerator and denominator by the exact same value. And all of these represent the same fraction of a whole, even though they have different numerators, different denominators. And groups of fractions like this that all represent the same thing are called equivalent fractions. And the definition of equivalent fractions are two fractions that have the same simplest form. So go ahead and pause the video, write down that definition, and come back when you're ready. So they have the same simplest form. 
And basically, looking back at our example with the pineapples, we started with 20 over 100 and ended up at 150. Well, along the way, we created a number of fractions that all represent the same thing. They all have the same simplest form, so they're all equivalent fractions. And as long as you multiply or divide a numerator and denominator by the exact same number, you will always create an equivalent fraction. Uh, it's in the cases where you don't multiply or divide by the same number that you potentially run into trouble. So, let's look at a few examples in that here. Let's start with that one first. Well, we know with the one-fifth that 20 over 100, 2 out of 10, um, what do we divide by? Is that 10 out of 50? All of those things represent the same thing. Well, starting from one-fifth now, we can multiply by anything we want. We can move to two-tenths. We had that before. Maybe we want to multiply by 17. Get 34 out of 170. Now we want to divide by 50 and get 17 out of 85. Regardless, as long as we multiply and divide by the exact same number in the numerator and denominator, we will end up with an equivalent fraction, one that has the same simplest form. And you can start from any of these forms as a fraction. Um, let's get this in red, so you can see each of the fractions in red and each of the ways that it's changed them in green. And you can start with any of these fractions in this list and create a number, an infinite number of equivalent fractions that represent the same thing. We'll talk more about why the equivalent fractions um, trick of multiplying or dividing by the same number in numerator and denominator works. Um, but for right now, uh, you just need to know that that is what you need to do. And go ahead and simplify these four fractions. We'll call them again 1, 2, 3, and 4. Put them into simplest form and then write two other equivalent fractions to the simplest form and to the um, fraction in question. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. So to put 14 twentieths into simplest form, you just need to divide them both by 2. So that becomes 7 tenths. And a few fractions that are the same as 7 tenths are 21 thirtieths. Multiply by 3 again. Get 63 ninetieths. Could multiply 14 twentieths by 2 and get 28 fortieths. As long as you multiplied or divided each or whatever fraction in that group by the exact same number in numerator and denominator, all of these fractions would be equivalent fractions. Uh, for number 2, 25 eightieths, divide both numerator and denominator by 5, and you end up with 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths, you multiply both by 2, you end up with 10 32nds, multiply both by 10, end up with 103 twentieths, divide both by 4, and we end up with 25 eightieths, which is back where we started. So any of these fractions, along with any fractions that you created, um, by multiplying and dividing that fraction by the same number in numerator and denominator, will be equivalent fractions. Uh, for 11 over 44, we just have to divide both by 11. And we end up with 1 fourth. Uh, equivalent fractions to 1 fourth include 2 eighths, 10 fortieths, 4 sixteenths, 3 twelfths, 7 twenty-eighths, etc. As long as you multiply or divide any of those fractions by the same number in numerator and denominator, uh, the same integer in numerator and denominator, you'll get an equivalent fraction. 17 twenty-fifths is in the simplest form. Um, so Things like 172 fiftieths, 1,725 hundredths, 34 fiftieths, 68 hundredths, etc. are all equivalent fractions to 17 25ths. So, as a matter of brief review, two fractions, uh, fractions have what is called a simplest form, and the simplest form is what you get when the numerator and denominator have a mean of less than 1. Uh, you can put any fraction in simplest form by simply dividing numerator and denominator by the GCF of the two to get the simplest form, and two or more fractions that have the same simplest form are called equal.